Number 15. My way. Well, you probably don't think karaoke is even slightly dangerous. There have been 6 to 12 cases of people taking lives when Frank Sinatra's My Way has been sung at karaoke bars in the Philippines. Through it all, and did it my way. Leading many to wonder if the song is haunted. Some say that the song is sung frequently in Filipino karaoke bars, where karaoke is a favorite pastime. So the fact that it corresponds to up to 12 people passing away since its popularity on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1969 is mere coincidence. Then again, others claim the song's aggressive lyrics make listeners lash out. Let's take a look at some of these incidents. From 2000 to 2010, six My Way related incidents occurred, leading to the phenomenon. One of them involved a 29-year-old singer who had his life taken at a karaoke bar by the security guard as he sang the song in 2007. The security guard was later arrested and in response to why he took the man's life, the guard said he was singing off-key and refused to stop, so he took the man's life in front of everyone there. People became so superstitious about the song that many bars in Manila remove my way from their karaoke machines playlists. Do you believe the song is really haunted like they think, or do you think it's merely a scary coincidence? Number 14. The Cruel Mother This is an old folk song with a haunting backstory. As the title suggests, the song is about a cruel mother who does something horrid. She takes the lives of her two newborn babies with a knife, but when she tries to wash the evidence away, it only makes it worse, and she cannot clean away the immediate guilt she feels. The mother did this because the children were illegitimate. When she goes to church, she comes across two babies at the front door. She claims that if they were her children, she'd treat them beautifully. But when she says so, they become the ghosts of her babies and inform her she's going to be tormented for all eternity. The song is haunting and once you listen to it, the lyrics will haunt you too. Number 13. Gloomy Sunday Travel to Hungary and listen to one of the country's most popular songs, Gloomy Sunday, and you may not live another day. At least, that's what some people believe. They say the song is haunted, and they have reason to think so. Piranha Records producer Yusuf Sahili put together a collection of several versions of the 1933 song. He asked several artists all over the world to cover this song and submit their versions. Sahili called the compilation one of the saddest songs on the planet. The song is about taking your own life, but when various artists got their hands on the task, slight tempo changes, and the way music was produced put a spin on Gloomy Sunday, making it sound even happy. The original lyrics in Hungarian were titled, The World Is Ending, but the song took a turn, writing about the thoughts of taking your own life from someone whose lover had passed away. These became the more popularized lyrics. While well, some of the artists approached by Sahili were happy to try their hand at the song, others were more superstitious, with one saying, I don't want to go near that song. It's totally haunted and cursed. I want to live. Urban legends do haunt the song, as some claim that a large number of lives lost were completed while listening to Gloomy Sunday, with some 1930s press clippings reporting at least 19 people taking their lives in both the US and Hungary. The song was then allegedly banned by radio stations, but all of this is largely unsubstantiated. The composer himself actually did take his own life, however. In 1968, 
35 years after writing Gloomy Sunday. So whether the song is cursed or not, it will be forever haunted by his spirit. Number 12, Hungry Like a Wolf. Whether the song is haunted or Diane Downs is just a psychopath, once you hear her story, the song will haunt you. In 1983, Downs, a mother of three, began to see a man who did not want children. So instead of doing what a normal person might do, break up and move on, Downs decided taking the lives of all three of her children was the best way forward. And so, one summer evening, she pulled over her car as she was out driving with Hungry Like the Wolf playing on a tape cassette in her vehicle's tape deck. It was there that she attempted to take the lives of all of her children. One of her daughters passed away, while the other two children lived. She was charged for her actions in May of 1983, to which she claimed that an attempted carjacker was at fault. However, the jury believed otherwise and they convicted Downs in 1984. She received a life sentence. During the trial, Hungry Like the Wolf was played for the courtroom, and Downs smiled and tapped her foot along with the music, apparently completely free of any guilt tied to her actions against her own children. Downs never wavered from her story that an attempted carjacker was responsible for her daughter's passing. If Diane Downs' story doesn't haunt you, whenever you hear Hungry Like the Wolf, I don't know what will. Number 11, Sesame Street. I'm sure you weren't haunted by the theme to Sesame Street when you were a kid, but certain prisoners are haunted by the taunting melody as they were forced to listen to it on repeat to make them mentally break. Along with Metallica, theme songs to children's television programs, including Sesame Street and Barney, were played on a loop by US interrogators to break the will of Iraqi captives in order to make prisoners cooperate. They were forced to tell interrogators how to get to Sesame Street, or at least that's what the song insists. According to America's Psychological Operations Company, the idea was to cause sleep deprivation by playing culturally offensive music, repeatedly to strain the prisoner's resistance. One Iraqi captive civilian reported that the technique had been used to keep him awake for up to four days, as reported by Newsweek magazine. PSYOPS Sergeant Mark Hadsell said, These people can't take it. If you play it for 24 hours, your brain and body functions start to slide. Your train of thought slows down and your will is broken. Sounds horrible to me. Number 10, Judas Priest. Heavy metal seems to be one of the more controversial music genres. At least that's what two families are blaming for the passings of their sons, who each took their own lives after listening to Judas Priest. The two men from Nevada took their own lives in 1985, two days before Christmas. The families of the two young men then took Judas Priest and CBS Records to court saying the men were driven to take their lives by subliminal messaging in the music, specifically, let's be dead and do it. The civil suit cites intentional and reckless misconduct, negligence, and the manufacture and marketing of a faulty product. Belknap's lawyer, Kenneth McKenna, stated, Judas Priest and CBS pander this stuff to alienated teenagers. Our argument is you have a duty to be more cautious when you're dealing with a population susceptible to this stuff. Seems to me like you could say that about any form of entertainment or media. So I disagree with McKenna's statement. The lawyer for Judas Priest and CBS counter-argued that the young men were troubled long before they began listening to heavy metal music. What do you think? Did these haunting subliminal messages lead the pair to commit these actions, whether they did or not? 
Belknap and Vance did take their lives at a church playground while listening to music by Judas Priest. Number 9. Love Roller Coaster When the Ohio players put out Love Roller Coaster in 1975, little did they know what a roller coaster of an urban legend it would launch. As the legend goes, someone had their life taken during the song's recording. During the instrumental break in the middle of the song, you can hear a female spine-chilling screech. Some say sound engineers looked past the scream and the record was released anyway in 1975. So was the scream one of someone passing away, or was it simply hidden in the recording for the sake of allure? Love Roller Coaster was a number one pop hit. The song was about the ups and downs of a relationship. In the second verse, around the 2.30 point, you can hear the scream briefly during the song's instrumental break. American Top 40 radio program blew fire into the urban myth, with Casey Kazza mentioning this crazy urban legend on air in 1976. There are actually a number of myths about this scream, the most popular being that Esther Cordette, the model who appeared on the band's Honey album cover, was burned with the heated honey used in the photo shoot at the same time that the band was recording, thus the agonizing scream. Another theory that includes Esther is that she is said to have suffered permanent disfigurement during the shoot, and when she burst into the Ohio Players recording session to confront the band manager about it and threaten a lawsuit, the man took her life in the control room. Another rumor was that the producer had an audio recording of a woman's passing and played it in the song without permission from the band. As the myth goes, they refused to play the song in concert or on TV after discovering it. When the urban legend sprang up, the band decided not to say a word on the matter because the myth was actually doing wonders for their album sales. But from whom did the scream come, and why is it so creepy? These questions haunt some listeners to this day. Number 8. The Ghost Song Most people know David Byrne as the lead singer of The Talking Heads, a new wave 80s band, but have you heard this urban legend surrounding one of his songs? After making it big, Byrne decided to go solo, trying his hand at creating some strange and sometimes unsettling tunes. One of these tunes is called Horses, while well, it fell under the radar in its day. The internet had some disturbing legends to tell about the song. Here it was called the Ghost Song, and some claim that it was made by the singer-songwriter with the intent to summon ghosts. The song was not credited to Burn, and according to the legend, the songwriter took his life the week after he recorded it. This is the urban legend anyway. There is not any factual or even anecdotal evidence that the Ghost Song actually summons ghosts or was created with the intent to summon them. But if you're daring enough to test this theory, listen to Horses aka The Ghost Song and see for yourself whether ghosts start to haunt you. Number 7. Metallica Remember those prisoners we talked about earlier? Well, Metallica's greatest hits are more than likely amongst the songs that will haunt them. While being serenaded with Sesame Street and Barney might sound horrific enough, imagine being blasted awake by Seek and Destroy, Enter Sandman, or Fade to Black. US interrogators use the band's heavy metal music to keep their prisoners awake for prolonged periods of time, causing sleep deprivation. Although the method is claimed to work, that certainly doesn't mean it's right, nor does it mean that interrogators are receiving reliable information. Some prisoners would say anything to get the music played on repeat for days on end to stop. Whether or not you consider this bad, 
These songs were used in horrible ways and are sure to haunt those they were used against. Number 6. Das Melfits A number of Redditors claim to be haunted by the Mass Effect 3 credit song of Das Melfits. The person behind the claim, Redditor Hero, wrote, I really enjoy fonts, but now when I hear that song, it just sends chills down my spine and depresses me. It seems Hero was not alone. Many others agreed. Other Redditors said that it also depressed them. While well, another said, I love the song, but now I've listened to it so many times because of how often I watch the different endings out of sheer desperation that it feels really sad. The reason it haunts so many on Reddit is likely due to the way the video game ended. The attachment they felt to the game was like losing a limb. The Determinator suggested wisely that the song reflects the game itself. It was a build-up and then a sudden ending, going nowhere, much like the game. Anyone else ever been haunted by a song that reminds them of something they felt attached to? Number 5. Spongebob Have you ever heard the Spongebob theme song played 800% slower? Well, you probably shouldn't, or it will haunt your dreams. When posted on Reddit, some Redditors found it funny, while others said it was 800% not okay. And the creepiest thing I've heard on this subreddit, Funderburg took his critique a step further, writing, My immediate thought is that it's some twisted, finished children tale telling of what happens to naughty children when they pass away, forced to row on Krampus's slave boat for all of eternity. If that doesn't give a haunted feel, I don't know what will. Number 4. Strange Fruit Other trees bear strange fruit. This song is haunting in a whole different way. Listen closely to the lyrics of Billie Holiday's Strange Fruit and you'll understand why. The dark song was performed by Holiday in Greenwich Village in 1939 as the closer for her set. To set the haunting effect, service would cease and the lights were shut off. Apart from a spotlight on Holiday's face, the song was so powerful and chilling that no encore was ever requested. The strange fruit in the lyrics are victims of the horrible act of lynching. Many on Reddit agree that the song is still strikingly haunting today. Vlad the Impalist wrote, I heard someone describe it as a religious experience. When the horns come in before I listen to it, now that I've heard it, it's the only way I can describe it. Number 3. Bass Cannon According to a dubstep forum conversation, you might want to skip this dubstep song unless you want your eardrums to burst, or worse. In a discussion between three users, Porky claims that after downloading the song Bass Cannon by Flux on iTunes, he doesn't recall the song sounding quite like the version he downloaded. After uploading the version to the forum at a user's request, the other two claim it sounds normal, but Porky says there's footage of people passing away in the YouTube video. Footage that no one but he and a user's 14 year old son can see. Porky wrote on the board two weeks later that he can't get the look of those people passing away out of his head and his ears recently started spontaneously gushing. After that, a nonsensical message was sent from Porky's account after which he was allegedly found passed away with his ears cut off and hung by the electrical cord of his headphones. Even more horrifyingly, Bass Cannon was playing on repeat. Is it a haunted song or just an urban legend? Number 2. Aussie Solution
similar to the Judas Priest incident. A string of other young males took their own lives allegedly after listening to a particular Ozzy Osbourne song. One of these young men was 19-year-old John Daniel McCollum, who took his own life in bed in October of 1984 while listening to the song. McCollum's father said, He's a perfectly normal kid there, who really doesn't show any signs of any depression at all. And happy, and all of a sudden, six hours he's passed away, no one could explain it. The only thing we know is that he was listening to this music. One line in Osborne's lyrics was about how taking your life is the only way out. Could this single line really haunt someone enough to take their own life? McCollum's entire family believed that it was the music that caused him to do it. While Osborne offered his condolences, in a statement, he claimed that McCollum had misinterpreted the lyrics. The solution in question is meant to be a liquid solution, drinking. And according to Ozzy, the song speaks about the dangers of alcoholism. While that explanation makes sense, some are still convinced the song is haunted. Which do you think it is? Before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. I'm currently doing a super poll on my Instagram. If you believe ghosts are real, then go to my most recent photo and tap the like button. If you don't, DM me saying why. When you're done, come right back to this video to find out the number one entry. Also, follow me on Twitter at YT underscore chills because that's where I post video updates. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new videos we upload every Tuesday and Saturday. Number 1. Ninth Symphonies this haunted song goes out to all the classical composers out there. According to the Curse of the Ninth, the Ninth Symphony of a classic composer will likely be their last. It has been anyway for a number of classical composers who have either passed during the writing process or directly after without completing a tenth symphony. Who exactly has fallen to this fateful curse? None other than Ludwig van Beethoven for one. Additionally, Schubert, Vohan Williams, Bruckner, and Mahler are named among others. Most believe this curse is nothing more than a superstition, which began when Gustav Mahler, after completing his 8th symphony, wrote a 9th symphony which he disguised as a song cycle. In doing so, he thought he'd combated the curse, but then he passed away before completing his 10th symphony. Schoenberg wrote about the curse in an essay, It seems as if something might be imparted to us in the tenth, which we ought not yet to know, for which we are not ready. Those who have written a ninth stood too close to the hereafter. While the so-called curse has long been contested by historians, if I were a classical composer, I'm not sure I'd dare write a tenth. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!